Hi, all my friends. It is so nice to see you today. Today is floss tube 39, and it's also two years since my first video, and that means today is a whip parade. And I mean, I don't see how this is not going to be a long video, so. Uh, like super, super long. I will be probably doing some edits simply because I do have like lingering effects from the disease that shall not be named. So, uh, just in case that takes over as a uh, coughing fit or I need to do the unattractive thing of blowing my nose. I don't know. I will probably edit any of those bits out, but otherwise, um, I didn't collect any stats here. Um, I normally do. I like to sh say this is what I did in the last six months. I will do that in the post editing. So somewhere on the screen, I will go ahead and pop up, um, some numbers. I know there's a whole lot of projects I haven't touched in the last six months and I honestly don't know which ones those are. <laughs> so <laughs> I just am here to enjoy my projects and uh yeah. <sighs> so shall we just get started here? Yeah let's just do it. We're gonna go chronologically in order of oldest to most current and any finishes I've had along the way, they will be shown according to their start date. Um, yeah, until I was preparing for this, I really didn't know how many projects I have. I have a total of um, 29 projects now and the reason that I really have no idea is because I have a much smaller number of active projects and all the other projects that are just paused and waiting to be active, um, they don't have a number any longer and my brain is totally fine with this. So it doesn't mind if it starts something. It's, it's fine. So we're just, we're just going to go with it. Okay. So my first project, um, I also made this handy dandy notebook. Um, wow. That was very blues clues esque. Anyway, um, it has all my artwork in it arranged chronologically. Anyway, so this was started in 2016. This is Frodo and Galadriel. It is artwork by Matt Stewart charted by heaven and earth designs. This is, um, regular size, regular color. It is obviously my oldest project. And it is, it is here. This, I started November 16th, 2016. And let's see, it's 25 count Lugana. If I look over here, it's my notes. Um, yeah, there it is two strands tent stitch. Up here started off two strand full cross and I did eventually make it, um, I played around with a little bit of one over one full cross versus two over one tent stitch and I did land on the tent stitch um, for this. So yeah, 25 count Lugana, two strand tent stitch and I don't have any other numbers to share with you they will be up on the screen somewhere this is one of my active projects it is on a uh, nerd scroll rod they are um, hefty boys so they don't fit on my um, Lowry strand stand clamp like just the normal clamp um, and I don't have the scroll rod adapters yet um but I do want to try it for this anyway I have been working in all of these parked threads 
and it looks nice. I know the halfway point is somewhere up here, halfway across, anyway. It looks lovely. I do love it. This is um, for my wall of Middle Earth that I will one day have in existence. Putting this piece on scroll rods has definitely helped it become um, easy to pull out or easier to pull out. Um, so yeah, that's one of my active projects. Next is Father Christmas with Toys. This is Max Color. It's artwork by Yvonne Gilbert, charted by Heaven and Earth Designs. Um, this was started November 10th, 2018. So, yeah, my three oldest projects are full coverage pieces. This one is on a 28 count, easy count, and I was trying, when I started this, I started testing out um, what extreme cross country looked like with waist knots. It looks chaotic and I don't like it. I don't like the waist knots. I feel like if I didn't have all of these little waist knot things, then I would be much more okay with it, but I didn't like it. I did start with the least amount of colors. Um, so maybe that was also my problem anyway, but then, but then I came up here and I'm working it by page and yep, there's lots of confetti going on here. So that's where we're at. And there's the close up of what is done. My, my, my book is falling off my lap here. There is so much confetti in here. <laughs> it was crazy to work through, but it looks so, so good. This is two-stranded uh, tent stitch as well. I suppose I will cut out other things too. We'll see. We'll see how much editing I decide to do. Moving right along to 2019 projects. This is Treasure Hunt Bookshelf, Super Size Max Color, and this is this is just incredible. Um, I know that we're somewhere around 75, 76%, something like that, because we're done three shelves, and I really needed to get this video filmed so that I can start working on this fourth shelf. Um, did I say artwork by Amy Stewart and charted by Heaven and Earth Designs? If I didn't, I do now. This is on a 28 count, um, easy count fabric. Two over one, tent stitch. Um, these scroll rods, I get a lot of questions, so let's let's just cover them. They are custom made by Case Creations. Um, that's all I could tell you. They are a sew-in binding here, which is not my favorite, but that is why these stay on the scroll rods all the time, is because of that binding. So, are you ready to see this all unroll? Got to back up here. Here we go. All right. Here's the first shelf and the second shelf. And the third. Um, it is impossible to do a side-by-side, -side, obviously, on this one. Um, so it'll just, the before picture will take over the screen somewhere. <sighs> Doesn't that look so
so good. Um, I can't even really bring it up close so you can see this, but it's amazing to see and I love it. I love it so much. So in total, see, we've got, we've got more to go. One more shelf. That's it. Hello. Um, I like looking at this too. <laughs> oh gosh. Um, yeah. I have what, like 200,000 something stitches left on this. I don't know. I have a number. Um, my goal is still to finish it by um, stitching in the Springs Retreat November of 2024. So I say October 31st is my goal, but I really do have like a week beyond that to finish it. Um, it's very doable. It's just, I, I, uh, I just have to think ahead this year because, and, um, cause there's some life changes happening next summer and, um, yeah. So my plan is, I think, I think what my plan on this shelf is I can now color complete. I have that option. Um, I think I already have two or three colors finished out of 239 colors. Um, so I could color complete. What I'm thinking of doing is doing um, black and uh, the dark brown, 3371. Both of those have over 10,000 stitches remaining. Um, they're the only two that have over 10,000. So I was thinking that I'll do those two colors across the whole shelf and get them done. And then I start having a lot more option. Do I want to color complete? Do I want to like fill in a section? What do I want to do? I don't know yet. Um, and while I am color completing, I'll, or while I'm doing those big uh, two colors, I can do a lot more stitches um, so that when, life is super busy next year, then I have time to um, either do less stitches or no stitches. So that's the aim. I will always keep tabs on where I'm at and make sure that um, I'm ahead of the game because I don't wanna, I don't wanna feel stressed about my bookshelf while I'm moving, but I'm still totally dedicated to finishing this. Um, oh yeah, that's what I, that's what I'm going to be doing as I'm going to be moving. Um, it's, there's, there's nothing more to say about that at this time, but anyway, it's the plan. Uh, so there's my bookshelf. Oh, do you want to see the back of this? Because it looks really cool. It's abstract. Uh, here's the back. I could use this as the thumbnail and uh, would you even be able to tell that it was the back just from a thumbnail? I don't know. But there it is. I'll bring it close. Oh, it's so big. See, now you can see some of the back stuff. Um, oh my gosh. I'm just manhandling this because what we got to do. See, doesn't it look so cool? Where's the third shelf here? Um, you know, I've always thought about framing this piece. But I no longer think I'm going to frame it. What I think I'm going to do is make it more like a tapestry wall hanging kind of a thing. And then when it's at home, I can still have um, like a, a, 
a glass or plexiglass um, like barrier thing. And then, um, but then I can always take it down and like fold it up and travel with it. So not that I'm going to travel very often with it, but, um, I like, I like the idea of it being like a tapestry wall hanging rather than like, a, like framed, but I don't know. Um, I like the flexibility that it gives me if I, if I frame it, if, if I don't frame it. Um, I don't. There we go. And there we go. Now, now I can uh, get started on that fourth shelf. <sighs> I was supposed to film this last week, but no, I was sick. Not happening. Um, next up is Woodland Enchantress. This is a gold collections kit from Dimensions. This I began in January 31st, 2019. Treasure Hunt Bookshelf was a restart um, into 2019. So it used to, I think my initial start was in 2017. January 1st, 2017, but the restart was January 24th, 2019. Um, anyway, Woodland Enchantress, this is on all the kit stuff, so it is a, um, 16 count gray Ada, and, oh, I need to put them on this side, here we go. So I did all the background on this. And then I went and I'm filling in her dress. I did her overskirt. Now I'm working on her, her underskirt. And um, it's white. When you're looking at the picture, it is white. But see, white. But all of this is blue so far. <laughs> Anyway, um, so I'm doing the overskirt, and then I will come up here and do, like, her bodice and the sleeves. Um, and then I think I'm going to do her staff and her hair and skin. And then I will do all the backstitching, couching, and French knots that are all throughout it. This is a potential finish this year, but we'll see. Um, we'll see. We'll see how that goes. I'd love to see it done this year. It looks real good. There are four seasons of these, um, and I would love to do all of them. I don't own any of them besides this one. But, guys, at the beginning of this year, I only had like up here done. And then throughout this year, I have mostly worked on it in 30 minutes. Um, but lately it's been a lot longer. Like yesterday, I put in several hours. It was the only project I worked on. Um, but most of this has been done in 30 minute chunks. Um, not even every day. So there's the power of, of consistent, regular, Consistent and regular is kind of the same word, but small, consistent um, stitching. Because, yeah, it's incredible. Like, really, it was just, like, this much that was done, and all the rest of this has been done since the beginning of this year. So, oh, it looks so good. Um, this is in a brand new bag to me. It's from Stitch and Button, Vicky. And it's, it says, uh, love grows here. And it's a beehive pattern. 
And the inside looks like that. And it had um, this uh, zipper pull on it with the little bee. And let's see if I can turn around beehive. Oh. oh, there's that project. Next, we're skipping 2020. I have no projects from 2020 because I didn't stitch in that year. Um, so we're skipping over to 2021. This is Queen of the Night. Um, artwork by Josephine Wall and charted by Heaven and Earth Design. I began this November 6th, 2021. And my brain's already starting to shut down. This is, this is going to be a great video. <laughs> um, oh my gosh. I was just thinking that this is like my fifth project to show you. They're all technically full coverages. Um, the next project is also a full coverage. So my six oldest projects are all full coverage pieces. Anyway, uh, this project is in an Alara Designs bag appropriate Josephine wall and it is uh, here we go it's a 25 count easy count there it is so this is a bit of her face she's kind of looking this way so this is the flowers in her headdress and then that's a bit of her face um that's the bit I was working on the last time I pulled this out but the moon looks fantastic it always looks great there is some crinic in the wings so far there will be more at some point um this is not a very large full coverage project. Um, that's only about 150,000 stitches. So lovely. So lovely. This is one of my um, active projects. Most of the ones I've shown are, are active projects. Um, Father Christmas is not, but the other ones are. And my plan is to, over the next year to get this to 50% finished. Um, so when my bookshelf is 100% finished, this project should be 50% finished. And then over the next six months, I'll stitch the rest of it to a full um, 100%. I do have this one fully hit it up with its own threads that's that's the plan all right next up is this is no smoking by randall spangler uh charted by heaven and earth designs and this was started november 15th 2021 um, it was began, it was begun, yes, by my daughter, Kaylin, who at the time would have been, that's three years ago, right? So she would have been 11. And it has since been adopted by me, but she is um, really looking forward to the finish of this so this is a 25 count easy count fabric um, 
two strand tent stitch. And that's all that's done. <laughs> oh, and, and this is, there's some white in here too. So that's hard to see, but that, that is where we're at on this project. Most of this was done by Kaylin. It really has only been hmm, a little bit that I've done so far. It's, it's adorable though. I think this is like my second smallest project. Um, that's a full coverage. It's 85,000 stitches. Oh, oh my gosh. Like I said, I'm still recovering. Um, so I, I, I make no uh, promises on, on what my brain does. It'll be worse than normal. That's all I can say. All right. 2022. Now I started a lot of projects. Yes, these are, they're busted. Anyway, um, I started a lot of projects in 2022. So while I have finished many of them, I still have several. Anyway, this is a sunset kit. It's called Peaceful Garden Path. It is on the kit, all the things, all the, all the kit things. I started this January 31st, uh, 2022. I think it's 14 count. Yes, a 14 count um, Ada. And it, lo it looks really good. I think I, I like where it's at right now because you can see in the, this corner what it looks like with just the blue. And then in this corner, you can see what it looks like with the cross stitching in. And then over here, this is what it looks like when you add in the back stitching. Like look how different all of that is. So. <sighs> um. I don't have anything else to say about that, do I? Um, I already said when I started it. Yeah, so this one is officially my oldest non-full coverage project. Technically, Woodland Enchantress is full coverage, even though in my brain I don't count it as one. Um, that's because it's a paper pattern. And I don't know how many stitches there are in it. Anyway, next up, this is Twisted Band Sampler by Northern Expressions Needlework. <laughs> Guys, I'm super sorry for, like, this is a longer video and I'm a little bit nuts. So, um... Northern Expressions Needlework. Yes, I am stitching the specialty version. You can buy it as an all cross stitch version, but I do quite enjoy specialty stitches. So I did that. This one I began February 24th of 2022. It was a birthday start. This is on a 20... Um, nope, a 32 count Belfast linen. <sighs> okay, so I have all the Avera swaths for this, but for some reason when I started stitching it, I, uh, I didn't follow instructions. I really don't know what I did, but I, I did this cross stitch band in the DMC colors. And I did it, I did it one, one over two. 
And then I came into the specialty band and I did them in a Vera Swa, one strand. And then I came back into here and it's, and I went back to DMC, but did two strands over two instead of one. And it was somewhere in here or at the end of it or something where I realized um, that I'm a dork and all of it should have been a Vera and not any DMC because I had all the Averisua and I was supposed to just stitch it in Averisua. And then I had already discovered that I had done two strands here instead of one strand. And anyway, it was a whole thing. And so here I switched into the Averisua, one strand over two, and then I started the specialty stitch also in Averisua. So the rest of this will be stitched in the appropriate Averisua silks. I will not probably take out any of the DMC stuff here. I will, I'm just gonna, I'm just, I'm gonna just leave it. Pretty certain I will. Um, I think it's okay to have things like that in our projects. And I don't like to, um, I don't like to activate my perfectionism thing. I'm a recovering perfectionist. Um, and and I don't like activating it. Anyway, it looks incredible on the black fabric. And I love the, um, I love the specialty stitches. I really do. They're fun. Um, there was something else I was going to say about this. Oh, um, if you are stitching on, on dark fabric, it's really helpful to have something light underneath it. Um, I have a light pad and I have found that I don't need it directly underneath it shining up. I just need it somewhere below it. Um, but a, a lamp would work or some people find enough success with like a white, white blanket or towel or sheet or something. Um, just something that lightens it up, you know, because like see that you can already see it so much better just by doing that. So. If, if you're working or interested in looking at dark fabric, um, something light behind it makes a huge difference. <sighs> okay, so then I started a second project on that same day, my, my birthday. This is Neuschwanstein Castle. Um, the artwork is by Robert Finale. I'm still not sure if it's finale, finale, final, e. I don't know. Um, however, this is an Etsy pattern, and I, it probably is not um, copyrighted appropriately. So, but I really wasn't aware of that at the time. Anyway. So this is uh, Neuschwanstein Castle. It's um, a favorite of mine. Uh, this castle, this castle is Cinderella's castle. And I loved this particular one of it. So I'm happy to see it. However, there is another one I saw. Somebody else showed another version that I really liked. So if it bothers me that this one is not copyright I might scrap this one and switch to another one but I haven't decided that at all and I won't for a while because this is nowhere near like a, f a focus anytime soon so we'll see I don't know this one is on um 25 count Lugana And that's it. <laughs> I know I've not touched this one at all. Well, I haven't touched it since the 100th day of the year. Shenanigans. It looks good. It really does look good. Um, and I do already own the pattern, so 
Will I just keep stitching it? I don't know. I don't know because I do, I do really like it. I really do. So I just also don't like working on projects that feel like stolen artwork to me. All right, moving right along. This is, I probably should have put a piece of paper behind this one. <laughs> Uh, this is Bella Filipina's uh, Mayari, Deity of the Moon. And I started this in March 12th, 2022. This was my first um, Fancy Lady and my first Bella Filipina. She is stitched on 28 count... Lugana. The colorway is Bestitch Me's um, Cosmos. And you know what? Let me let me do it this way. And <laughs> I've got the. This is almost the very bottom of her dress, but I've got the top of her halo. So I um, I wanted to place this pink bit in a certain ish place. So that's why I started from the bottom. It was easier for me to place it that way. But I didn't like stitching from the bottom. So I worked my way up to the top and did the halo. The halo, y'all, is fully beaded and crinicked. It doesn't have the treasures. You can still see some big bits. I did not put the treasures in yet. But um, otherwise, it is so hard to show you just how many beads are in this thing but this blue stitching is the only regular thread in this whole thing the rest is either crinic or beads and yes it's an opalescent fabric I forgot to say that I love it so much next time I do work on it I will be working on her head because you know top down so that's where that is where she's at. Is so lovely. Um, so even though this is 28 count and I use the call for beads, I did have to kind of mm, play around a little bit with bead placement. It the, this is there's so many beads that in some places it was really, really crowded, even on a 28 count. So um but that's kind of why I don't ever want to do a beaded project on less than a 28 count. However, I know that there are other beads that are smaller um, in size. And so that's how I would feel comfortable with like a 32 count. Uh, anything else I need to say about that one? Nope. Next is another active project. This is the Summer Garden by the Drawn Thread. And my one, my only complaint about this is that my fabric that they gave me was darker than their model stitch here. That's really my only complaint about this whole thing. Um, but I did order the um, kit from them because I wanted to, I don't know, experience it, I guess. And mine just looks, mine's just darker. So unless they, I don't know, it doesn't matter. It still looks lovely. It's a 32 count linen called Summer Khaki. And this entire left side is done. And I've started the tree on the right side. And if you know of the decision, the questions, the questioning, decisioning that I was needing to do about the colors in the this tree, um, it's supposed to be this color. I got it. Um, it's called 
Seagrass by Dinky Dyes. And yes, it is, it, it's, it's the right color. <laughs> um, so yeah, I will, I will be using the appropriate color for it. That's how I'm solving that one. Uh, this is pretty easy to stitch. There are a lot of specialty stitches all throughout. Um, we've got the names down here. It just looks so good. I'm looking forward to um, getting back to this now that I have this thread because that that was what was kind of halting me on this um, project. It's a nice project to be able to pull out when I'm on the go. This one's in a Alara Designs bag, again. This size fits perfectly in my purse. So it, my travel project of any kind goes in it because <laughs> it fits perfectly. It's, it's basically the same size as like a book sleeve typically is. Let's see. Next up, this is Cirque de Caro by Ink Circles. Um, this, when did I start it? March 27th, 2022. And it's my first so far only Ink Circles. Uh, it is, all, all of these like tiles are different. The little, little bitty ones aren't all different, but most of them. Um, most of them are. This one is a really fun one when I do get to stitch on it because of my variegated floss that I'm using. Here is where we're at. This is a 32 count Belfast linen in Stormy Night. Yes, Stormy Night. And the thread is PR090 from Silks For You. And it stitches up beautifully. I love it. It's fun to take this one motif at a time and just decide how I feel like pathing the variegation. You don't have to stitch with variegated threads in that way, but I am enjoying it with um, this piece. <coughs> I need a drink. better. Whew. Okay. Um, the Cirque de Caro, I'm stitching it two strands over two on the 32 count. The next one I started was Autumn Water Garden Mandala. This is a Shadow Lane the first of hopefully many chatelaines in my future, in my life maybe. Um, I started this April 29th, 2022, because that's what we're doing. It's on a 28 count cashel linen. And I'm doing it with all the called for. So this is antique white. The fabric is much larger than what the project actually will be, but that's okay. I did not, I did not cut it down and I won't. So here's the center. Um, these are little fish and I think they're freaking adorable. Um, we're missing so many beadings in through here, um, because the next stitching I've got is this, but I've included the, uh, rainbow, uh, 
shiny petite rainbow treasury gallery braid. Did I get all the words in there even if I got them in the wrong? Anyway, that's that's in here and now I've got this variegated one that I was working on. But otherwise that that portion is like finished except for the beading. So Ah, uh, it is so lovely. Chatelaines are incredible. Like pictures do not do them justice at all. Um, I am doing this with all of the called for threads. Um, petite treasure braid. Rainbow gallery petite treasure braid. There we go. That's that's all the right words. Um, dinky dyes, Gloriana's thread gatherers I don't know all the things I've got all the things I've got the beads next up um this is owl forest embroideries 2022 stitch along so it is free on their website um I started this May 27th, 2022, and there's now something bothering me in my eye. Good job. Great. Anyway, um, so each plant was, was out like a part, one part. It came out in 12 parts. I decided to stitch little baby tiny stitches. Um, it is a... 40 count linen. There we go. 40 count linen. <laughs> one strand over one tenth stitch. Yes, that's what it is. Um, this first one is in DMC. This little band under here is in Mohs Sal, but I do want to take it out because it blended way too much in with the fabric. I just don't know what to replace it with yet. And then here, I'm doing it as charted because I got the um, like Owl Forest embroidery threads. And so then it's a mix of DMC and Owl Forest embroidery um, threads. But that is what it looks like. They're so tiny <laughs> when you stitch over one on 40 count. And that's how big the entire piece is going to be. I actually think it's more like that, but still. I love, I love tiny stitches, but I wouldn't want everything I do to be tiny stitches. Um, I do like a wide variety of, of all the things. Let's see. Christmas. This is Victorian Christmas Bell Pull. It's a Jan Lin kit from, I don't know, a long time ago. 93. I am doing this with all the kit stuffs. So it is a 14 count Ada. This is um, a gold metallic thread. I really loved doing the font here. Um, this is completely done. Their back stitching and everything is finished. I think it was like eight colors of back stitch to do it and the instructions are things like use this color for her hat but not where it touches this part of it and do this on her coat but not where it touches this thing over here so it was definitely a stitch all of it and then do the back stitching situation um these hollies repeat in every single corner so um, I'll be stitching those hollies a lot. 
Okay. Um, I started that at May 30th. If I didn't say that. Oops. Oops. I pushed the wrong button. Oh, there we go. We're back. Next, I started Canopy Heart by Dakota Detweiler. This is from Heaven and Earth Designs. It is a retired chart. Um, you can now find Dakota over at Charting Creations, but I don't know if this one is there. This has 10 colors only, and it's beautiful. I love this one so much. This one I've kind of been wanting to stitch on lately, but I also, like, look, just 10 colors. Just, that's it. That's all it, anyway. Um, but, you know, like, I've got plans, and right now I'm mostly sticking with those plans. So this is on a 28 count um, Alaris Chinese fabric. God, <laughs> I don't know what 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 you call it. Um, it's it's very stiff, even wheat. And that's 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 all. That's all she wrote, guys. But it's only being ten colors. It's pretty easy to stitch, and I think that's why I I kind of wanted to pull it out lately um we'll see if I give into that right 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 now I really am giving Woodland Enchantress focus and I'm really loving that so we're going with that but this one's also great um May 31st I said that one didn't I I think I said it okay another active project that also should have paper behind it um because ignore ignore that look just just look at this one there we go this is sabrina by mirabilia and uh she's being stitched on a 28 count picture this plus fabric in the color sprite Uh, she's, her skin is one over one, but the rest of it is two over two. And it's, it's as called for except for the beads. The beads I, um, changed to their DMC color and then I added in a Krynic blending filament. Uh, I've been working over here. She's an active project. Um, yeah. She looks good, but look how much more. All of that's got to be filled up with skirt. <laughs> uh, yep. She's real nice to work on. Um, every time I pull her out, I don't know, it's just, she feels easy to work on. She's in this bag by um, the sewing shop .ca, Kaylee over, over in Canada. I mean, I guess up, she's up from where I am, upwards. I think I'm ridiculous for what my brain is coming out with. Anyway, I started that June 6th, 2022. And next. This is Pavan for these times. It's a long dug samplers. This was also a restart. Um, I, I wanted it on a dark purple with a gray thread and... Um, I dyed a purple and it, it ended up not being right for what I wanted. And 
So I restarted it with a secondary dyed fabric that I that I did. And it's so much better now. Um, so, so much. So this is a 36 count um, even weave fabric that I hand dyed. This is not that big of a piece. Um, but here we are. This is PR150 by Silks For You. It is subtly variegated. I hope you can see it. Um, it is, it's just it's so subtle in its variegation, but uh, so nice to stitch with. I love it. Um, if you're curious on how to dye with dark things, like if you want a dark color, um, I pretty much just followed all the things on the RIT dye website uh, where it talked about keeping your water warm and I think using salt or vinegar. I don't know. Whatever it told me to do, I did and it came out beautifully dark. I think I used double the dye amounts as well and made sure to let it sit a long time. Uh, so that was a restart towards the end of October, October 27th, 2022. And then I met Alara for the first time and that's where this project got started. This is called Spirit of the Phoenix. This is a Dakota Detweiler from Charting Creations. And it's very much like Canopy Heart. <laughs> but the phoenix and also beautiful and this is is like i don't know so so sad of a start anyway this is on a 25 count lugana that looks like that Uh, it's not going to be nearly this big. I just didn't feel like cutting the whole thing down, I guess. I, when I was going to start it, I just started it. Um, so. I should. I should cut this down because then I will know how much of this fabric I can use for another project. But this was the last of my 20... 22 projects. This is two strand. Uh, no, no, it's a full cross. So this one and Canopy Hearts are both a one over one full cross project. So Dakota Detweiler, a full cross. I think I forgot to say that for Canopy Heart. But what's new? Okay. My next project, I started, um, I started January 1st, 2023, and this, this was a finish, so, here we go. It is on, oh, the reindeer. It's the reindeer part 12 of A Year in the Woods by Cottage Garden Samplings. It is stitched on 32 count Lugana in Gray Magic by Be Stitch Me. And all of winter will be on one piece. So fox and swans will show up here as well. This is as charted, however, in case you have not heard at this point, there is a miss chart. The lightest color in the antlers um, 
is incorrect. It should be the same variegated floss that you uh, put in the the reindeer. Otherwise, it's it's very very light colored, and it looks a little odd. So I did um, make that one change as appropriate. Oh, the other thing I didn't put in was I did not put in the snowflake right here. I, I couldn't, but that's it. That's all the changes I made. <laughs> so happy. Um, yeah, so I had to finish to show you guys. Uh, next project I started was snowshoe hair. Now, I do not have this project any longer. It is in Canada. I stitched this project for Kaylee at the sewing shop. She charted it. The artist is Miriam Rousseau. And I stitched this on a 28-count opalescent um, even weave that Kaylee hand dyed. So it is now with her, you can buy the um, chart on her website. The kit, if it's not there yet, will be soon. Um, I think she's waiting for it to be more snowy. I don't know. But I no longer have it, but it was a joy to work on. Um, anyway. So I started that January 7th and I finished it July 22nd. The reindeer I finished August 5th. I don't know if I said that, but um, I think it's kind of funny that all my finishes I've had in the last six months were all started in this year and not the previous years. But a lot of previous years were old ones, not old ones, big ones. Lots of full coverages. Okay, so moving along in 2023, this is Green Hills by Riolis. Um, it's called Green Hills, but I like to call it something about Hobbit because Hobbits. Um, I started this February 13th, 2023. And uh, they, they use a wool acrylic thread. And I really like working with it. Um, and I like their charts. Very, very easy to read. So this is a 14 count Ada. Um, and that's where we're, we're looking at it so far. I just, I don't like cutting these threads too long because they do, they will start fraying if they're too long, but that's okay. The colors are fantastic um, in here. I can see me wanting to stitch on this again, probably like late January, early February, because I'm just craving some of those like spring colors. I can see, I can see pulling this one out, even if it's just like for a day. have a lot of uh wall of middle earth starts going on right now okay so this one is home in the mountains also known as rivendell this is from golden kite the fellowship is right here i have the standard size blended threads version of this project It is on a 28 count, um, easy count fabric, right there. This is the right side of the project. Um, I don't normally start there, but I did on this one and I love the colors. And yes, it's like 80 blends in this entire project. So. 
lot a lot of blends um it's not too bad confetti wise here but in other parts of the project it is the left corner um is pretty confetti heavy but this side wasn't i do have adam hart blend blend thread drops i think is what she calls them uh but they they look like this where you can put your two colors and then your blend right there and i have it written on it um i do need to order like all of these colors so that i have them all um but and that's just why you don't see them is because i haven't i've only pulled whenever i've needed to but i do intend to figure out exactly what colors I need to. And this is obviously not all of them. These are just the ones that I've used so far in the project. Uh, they are a bit of an investment, those thread drops, but I really, I really like them. So that was started February 24th, 2023. Many of you also joined me in on my, my Rivendell star on that day. And then I started the Realm of Middle Earth by Tilton Crafts. This is uh, no longer available as a chart. It is also a larger stitch count than my super-sized treasure hunt bookshelf. <laughs> so, <laughs> this is stitch count. This is my biggest project. I am stitching this on, look, I have all the threads all together. <laughs> They're like all the same colors. Anyway, this is on 40 count Verdal Even Weave. And I started in the middle because the margins aren't quite three inches and um, I just wanted to start when I wanted to start. So I started in the middle and we'll work this quadrant and that'll take me several years and so it's all good. Um, I've used a friction pen for some gritting and I'm only gritting a little bit as I go, <laughs> but that's still a lot of stitches because remember this is 40 count and it's one strand 10th stitch. So very, very tiny. So even though this is a bigger stitch count from my bookshelf, It's not as big fabric-wise. But yeah, there we go. Uh, this is, is very, a lot of confetti, but then there's going to be other parts that aren't nearly as much confetti, so I'm told. <laughs> so it is a little slow going, but that's, that's fine. It's, uh, it's so enjoyable. Guys, I love my wall of Middle Earth and I cannot, I cannot wait to have anything finished <laughs> to say I have it started. Right now I just have, I just have projects um, going for it. Next up on my wall of middle earth is one to rule them all by tilton crafts this one is my smallest full coverage it's only about eighty thousand stitches it is on a 28 count and i have all the black done that's all it is 
March 23rd, 2023 is when I started it. Just a little guy. He's just a little guy. And... I did not at all mind just having all of that block stitching. <laughs> uh, it was a nice change of pace, honestly. So, I liked it. One to roll them all. And 80,000. Yep, that's all. That's all I get. That's all I got right. Um, that's not really all I have more projects. We've got the Ranger. This is by Matt Stewart, chartered by Heaven and Earth Designs. And uh, I think I stitched on this project twice. I started it May 6th, 2023. Look at it. Look at the little bittiness. <laughs> That's all. Sorry, Aragorn. Uh, yeah. So... 28 count, easy count fabric, two strands, tent stitch. That's how big he'll be, but that's how little bitty I've done. It's okay. It's okay. I love the progress I'm getting on what I've been working on. Um, and I love the projects I have to work on, and I love the patterns I will eventually start working on. That's okay. Um, all right. Next, this is my stamped kit by Oraloa. It is the Phoenix. I think that's just what it's called on their website is Phoenix. Uh, this is right side up. So here's the front. But I've been color completing it. Um, so it's kind of everywhere. Like I did start up in this corner. But then I, I just... I needed it even easier, so I just color completed as I, as I went. So I think I'm on color five right now. Yeah, I think I'm on I'm on color five. So, like I said, you won't really be able to see from this side what's going on, but there's its little beaky and eye area. And this one lives in a, a a book sleeve, I think is what they're called. This one was off Amazon. It's got like a front pocket um, and, a, and it fits perfectly in my purse this size. So that's why I, I, that's when I tend to use projects like this or the drawn thread is when I'm going somewhere and I, I'm able to just stick it in my purse. The next project is a finish. And I still have it. I will be gifting this in a couple weeks. Um, next weekend, actually. Here we go. So... This piece is, would not have been around last whip parade. This is a 
custom created chart by Meltem at Luthien Art Shop on Etsy. I highly recommend you check out her shop. She does amazing custom work of dogs and cats. So this, this is, um, this dog's name is Fira. I met her as an old blind geriatric dog. Um, and she was, she was very, very sweet when my, uh, my boyfriend, Steven, he had her from a puppy and when he had to make the decision to put her down, I knew that this was going to be his Christmas present. So I gathered up the very few photographs I had and he had, he doesn't have many pictures of her at all. Um, and none of them from when she was young and healthy, which is when he really remembered her as. But I took what pictures I had, the knowledge I had, sent them to Meltem, and, um, and, we, and we figured it out. Um, his favorite memory of Fira is being outside and playing in the yard. So that is where the coloring of this inner circle is an outdoor, outdoors. Um, and that's, that's what Meltem does. She's got this very special gift where she translates your pet into this beautiful stained glass work, um, capturing their personality, their, like your favorite memories, things like that. Um, it's, it's a fantastic process. And, um, there is some go back and forth also, like she sent me a first draft and we made some changes and, um, it was a beautiful process start to finish. And I enjoyed every single stitch. This is a 36 count, um, even weave that I hand dyed. This was the purple that I had initially started um, Pavan, the long dog samplers on, and it wasn't right, but it's perfect for this. I stitched it one strand over two on this fabric. So I, I am going to gift it to him just like this um, because I have to travel on an airplane to go visit him. So he's going to get it not framed, but I will be getting it framed. I I really want a circle mat where you see the purple fabric, but it still is the shape of the um, stained glass. But then the frame I would like square. That's what I see in my head, but um, I will of course, ask Steven since he will see it before it is framed. But that's, that's this sweetheart, absolute sweetheart. I started this October 21st and finished it November 7th. It was such easy stitching and I loved, I loved every minute of it. every every single stitch my next project is this mill hill yes i gave it its own sleeve it's called haunted haunted zone it is um it comes with a magnet, but I think I'm going to finish it as an ornament instead. It's in this really teeny tiny little pouch. It's That's not a teeny tiny pouch, but it is in a little pouch with um, a zipper pull. 
I don't know. This pouch I got from Stitch West. I'm pretty certain this key fob came from, or zipper pull or whatever it is. This came from Stitching in the Springs in March. 2023 so it does say 2023 down here but I'm pretty certain that's where that came from but the colors just went so well together um this would be a finish if I just worked on it <laughs> um the the floss stitching is almost finished and then I have to bead and there is one treasure right there yes so that's that's where we're at I started this October 7th. Um, it's so little. It really wouldn't take me long to finish it. But I haven't, obviously. Okay. Next up, this is um, Country of Hydrangea by Andriana. Uh, there, I did have to fold the pattern to make it fit, so a little bit is is cut off here. But um, I love all of Andreana patterns, and I definitely would like to stitch more. But this is my first one, and I love the colors. It is. Uh, I got it as a kit. So. It's a 16 count Ada, and that's, it's not very big, look at that. This is the middle, and then I count it up, and now I'm starting from the top down. So it really isn't, it, it, it's not a very big piece, but the colors are, are gorgeous in it. The pattern is very, very easy to read also. I started that October 13th, 2023. Um, oh, next up, I started this little guy. I started him November 8th, 2023. And I finished him on November 19th. Um, mostly because this is while I was sick. Um, so I just, he's so cute. This was from, or is, from Luthien Art Shop, again. I started him because I was, ha I had, um, Sometimes I get very, very vivid dreams and they make me very cranky to have them. And I woke up feeling very cranky and in my email was this freebie. It was a freebie at the time. It is no longer you, but you can purchase it from her Etsy shop. Um, and I started it that day. <laughs> and then I just kept working on it and... And then I got sick and I kept working on it and here we are. It's called Christmas Peaking uh, and I highly recommend registering, signing up, signing up for her newsletter. Um, once a month she'll send out a free pattern. This was the one from November and I know what December's looks like. And it's, it's a little one like this. And it's really cute. And you should do that. So sign up, don't delay. If you like this kind of a pattern. Anyway, it's, uh, if you go to her Instagram link tree, there's a, uh, like, sign up for her newsletter thing here anyway 
what else do I, oh, this is an 18 count oatmeal Ada. I had it, and so that's what it got stitched on. I did one strand, um, yeah, one, one strand full cross on it. Again, super easy um, stitching. I took pictures after finishing every single color because I started at the biggest, which was um, the black, and I worked my way down to the smallest, which were the browns in his hands. Yeah, so yeah, there's that one. It's very easy, quick stitching, which was beautiful while I wasn't feeling good and just like this time of year. Yes, there's more starts. <laughs> this I started November 14th. It's Design Works. I got this as a kit from the freebie table at the Stitching in the Springs retreat that I was just at. And um, the chart is a little annoying because it's just one really big piece and I need to, I need to copy it or something, but I started it it's on a 14 count Ada and I found the middle and went up and just like worked my way down. So I really liked this start. So <clears throat> many, many of us were uh, sick from retreat and I I may have jokingly said that everybody should have a new start per sick person, um, but really I ended up starting only two projects, um, only, only two projects, um, this being one and the next one, which I'll show you, but like I said, at the very beginning of this video is it's like it keeps your spirits up sometimes you know like and it's just gonna go into my pause projects where my brain's not counting those projects and it feels fine so I just I just went for it I just started it and I started Here's the last project, guys. It's the Star Touched Meadow by Carolyn Manning. It is um, a stitch along. Only the first one has been released so far, and it's November. Uh, you can stitch them individually, but I'm going to stitch them all as one, and November belongs right down here. But I did start by finding the center of my fabric and stitching the frame for August so that I could place November in the right spot. I'm stitching this on a 32 count Irish linen is what it's called. I also got this free, I think, from Stitch West's freebie table. So this is August. And then here is the start of November. I'm stitching it one strand over one full cross on 32 count. So it is itty bitty. And I love it so much. <laughs> so that's what an entire square is going to be. Um, that, that shape, but there will be 12 of them when all is finished. This is my first Carolyn Manning piece. Um, so happy to finally, finally get one started. Um, Cause now I own several of their patterns, of Carolyn's patterns. Oh boy. Okay, that is all the projects. So 
I had four finishes and I do find it amusing that they were all starts in 2023. I have 29 um, projects in total and I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven projects that are active. So that's really kind of the number that my brain is working with regularly is, is seven. And what else can I say? Oh, here's some nerdy things. So I'm going to pop up some graphs. The first one is um, I wanted to see among my full coverage projects how many stitches I've completed versus how many I have remaining. <laughs> and that was that was sad. It's not even a quarter of the way through. So we've got that graph. But then I wanted to see what my active projects only. So these are my three full coverage. It doesn't include Woodland Enchantress because that's not digital. Um, but it is Frodo and Galadriel, Queen of the Night, and Treasure Hunt Bookshelf. And here is their stitched versus remaining stitches to go. Um, that feels a lot nicer. I didn't make these graphs to actually make me feel anything. It was just, I like visualizing my projects in different ways. Um, and now I would, I would like to see all my projects. Um, the non-full coverage is trickier because you don't know how much stitches, but if I just go by like a 100 block and call even the blank spaces a stitch, then I think I, I can work with numbers like that. Um, if it's not a digital pattern, if it's a digital, obviously I can have a number but anyway um but I don't have that as a graph at this time because that's not information I currently have in place um if I decide to do this in post editing I will pop up some other other graphs about my full coverage projects that I've that I have access to just for fun. But if nothing shows up here, I didn't do it. We'll see, we'll see, we'll see. Um, I think that's all the cross stitching things. I can't, I'm, I'm trying to make sure that I, that I covered everything. Um, do I have plans for the next six months? Um, really, I mostly just want to work on my active projects. I, I have a lot that's going on in life and will happen. Um, and so if I feel like starting something, I will. I'm not going to ever stop myself. Uh, but I really want to see... Um, I know that I'm going to need to see progress somewhere in my life while there's a lot of change and upheaval going on. So that's why I, I really just want to focus primarily on what, what my active projects are. And just to cover what those are, we've got um, Treasure Hunt Bookshelf as like my daily focus piece. Um, I will start probably with something like a thousand stitches and and then eventually I'll I'll go down to like 600 or something but um we'll see. I'm going to start with a thousand while I can. Um Woodland Enchantress is theoretically it's my daily 30 but right now it's it's kind of just like major focus. <laughs> um I have Queen of the Night as my full coverage project, Frodo and Galadriel as my Wall of Middle Earth project, Sabrina is my non-full coverage project, 
the Summer Garden Specialty Stitches. And um, Phoenix is what I'm calling in the white space. It's the, it's, it's in those little moments, not just like travel stitching, but like brain break or, um, I don't know, during school time or something else like that. So that's what I've got going on right now. And now, now we're at the end. This video wasn't as long as it probably could have been because I wasn't pulling up any numbers free pulling. You would have seen all of those numbers pop up on screen, but I will do that post editing. Anyway, now it is time for my giveaway. So I, uh, I'm so happy about this giveaway. Um, and it's, it's, it's bigger than I had planned. Thank you to the generosity of Melton. So Luthien Art Shop, probably not a big surprise that I am absolutely loving her and her work. I especially love her, her talent in her custom projects. So today we are going to have 11 winners, okay? Um, Meltem is, is offering 10 projects from her shop to you. This does not include the custom piece, but any of the others, you may, uh, you get your choice. 10 people will get their choice of a project um, from her shop. And she doesn't just do stained glass. She has other projects there. Just, just in case you haven't checked out her shop yet. We will have one person. Person number 11 will win a custom chart. Now these are dogs and cats only. And so if you have a pet or a past, like a Rainbow Bridge pet, um, cat or dog, and you are interested in getting a custom chart from Luthien Art Shop, then we have that, okay? So, the way we're gonna, we're, we're gonna do this, okay, is um, if you're interested in the custom chart, then in your comment, um, share something about your, your pet that you would, you would get as a same glass. Okay. Um, if you are interested in one of the 10 charts from her shop, then in your comment, let me know something about your, um, plans looking forward into 2024. Um, this could be stitching related or it could be anything else in life. You don't have to share a lot of detail or anything. Just something that maybe you're considering doing in 2024 looking forward. Um, there's no keywords or anything that you have to say. Just talk about that in your comment and um, I will pull winners that way. So today is November 22nd. So I will leave this giveaway open until um let's say maybe I should look at my calendar and when when I film for uh December. I want to make sure that I give I I give a, enough time for this. Okay, so let's say until December 27th. Okay, that's five weeks, I believe, from now. Um, and then, that's that's really long. Let's not wait that long. Let's do December 13th. Okay, so December 13th, that's about three weeks. Um, so you have until December 13th to enter. And um, yeah. I'm really, really excited for for all of you. So uh, recap, 
if you want a custom stained glass of your cat or dog, then in your comments, tell me something about your pet. And if you would like to enter for one of 10, one of the 10 winners, if you'd like to enter for one of the charts, besides a custom from Luthien Art Shop, uh, just tell me something about your 2024 plans. Um, and there will be 10 of those winners, 11 in total, okay? Uh, I think that's all. <laughs> Much love to you. And um, I don't know, I just, I'm sorry for my lack of focus in this video, but we made it through in under two hours. <laughs> I love you all. You are fantastic. You are lovely and you are worth living. Bye.